government problem has been solved with government band-aid, which has been solved by government band-aid. So if you pull off government band-aid, you have three more broken band-aids underneath it that sometimes make things worse. The EPA was not meant to go out and, and harass Oregonians and, and murder or Oregonians. What you're inferring is, you know what? If we legalize heroin tomorrow, everybody's going to use heroin. How many people here would use heroin if it was legal? I bet nobody would put the hand, oh yeah, I need the government to take care of me. I don't want to use heroin, so I need these laws. Hello, welcome to Logan for Liberty. I'm coming at you from the Pacific Northwest where the sun shines so bright only to rain just a few hours later. How are you all doing? I hope you are all having a fantastic day. I am getting over a cold, so do not mind my voice if it is somewhat nasally. So today I want to talk about a specific topic. I was going to enter the episode, the podcast episode, going over some headline news, some basic stuff, but I decided not to. I'm thinking about talking about climate change pretty soon because we had this uh, this somewhat, this, this single report, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'll go into that later. It is not relevant right now. I want to talk about this caravan, and I don't want to go over the same bull crap that everybody else has gone over. You've already heard it all. Okay, I, I, I trust that you... you understand where this caravan is coming from, how uh, the more left-leaning pretend to be moderate media lied about the caravan, saying it was just full of women and children as if it wasn't mostly men. MSNBC got caught reporting that it was mostly a caravan of men. Even uh, Mexico has tried turning away some of these um, migrants that show up at their border. Uh, Mexico doesn't like Honduran uh, supposed refugees. It's quite a coincidence that they go straight through Mexico and seek asylum in Mexico as opposed to the United States. That is besides the point. There's a lot of people, even some of my libertarian friends, I consider myself a libertarian. I am a huge fan of Austrian economics. As a matter of fact, Ron Paul is my homeboy. Um, I am just finishing up Economics of One Les Lesson by Henry Hazlitt. So, <clears throat> I am very much a libertarian through and through. Property rights, non-aggression, individualism are my three tenets that I believe in. Of course, if I wanted to divide it up a little more, I would say free markets, individualism, peace, tolerance, uh, decentralization, limited government, stuff like that, the, uh, the scientific method, natural law, whatever. I could name a bunch of things that I believe in. Through and through, I am a libertarian and or classical liberal. However you personally choose to define those terms, I really like uh, Ayn Rand's school of objectivism. I like Mark Pellegrino. I'm only saying this so you get the idea that I'm not bashing libertarians. But this is a common thing that has been said by some libertarians. Let me just let me just go off on a tangent real quick and talk about how anytime there is a Republican who's somewhat free market and they talk about libertarians, they make this hasty generalization of what all libertarians believe. And it's always these, haha, Loberts do this, X, Y, and Z, therefore... That's why I'm not part of the Lobert party, the Lobertarian party. And these people are more collectivist than they like to admit. Nonetheless, this is a tactic. This is something that the left has been saying. And some people within the liberty movement who are more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Who, who are more sympathetic to the Libertarian party than I am. Even though technically I am a member of the Libertarian party. But that is besides the point. They have been, you've probably seen the meme, but I'll just parrot the talking point. The United States was using chemical weapons on civilians. Now, this is tear gas that we're talking about. Okay. So, the question is, 
is tear gas a chemical weapon? That is equivalent to, gee, I don't know, Syria, Nazi Germany, these countries that have used chemical weapons on their own people. First of all, before I get into that, let me just tell you, immigration is something that I struggle with. I don't think we should say we should stand at the border and turn around all immigrants. I believe that we should definitely let in skilled immigrants, doctors, engineers, people with high IQs. I think that's a good idea, but I don't I don't think it should necessarily end there because I don't think your freedom of movement should stop should be stopped by the state or an authoritarian type of regime just because you don't meet these certain criteria standards that I feel are good standards or good criteria. Just so we're clear, I'm talking off the cuff. <clears throat> I know what my opinions are, but I haven't spoken them out loud or written them down, so I'm talking off the cuff a little bit. All that noise in the background. I'm so sorry. It's storming right now. Well, so it's weird. Let me Before I go on, let me just go... Let me digress a little bit. So I'm in my bedroom, and my window faces the road. Faces one side of the house, obviously. My living room is on the other side of the place. Outside my bedroom window, there is no rain at all. I mean, well, well, you can tell that it rained over there. It's wet, and, you know, there's a few drops in my window, but it's not raining. But I can hear down the hall into the living room, just outside my patio door, it is pouring down rain. That is what you deal with in the Pacific Northwest. All right, I digress. So talking about immigration, I'm not a closed border restrictionist, and I'm not a protectionist. I'm not a left-wing conservative who thinks that we need to protect our businesses because blah blah blah, the Rust Belt, blah blah blah, cheap labor, oh my god. Those are pretty anti-capitalist individuals. Nor am I an open borders like, just let them all come through. And open borders means different things to different people. Some of my, uh, Close friends call me Bordertarian, call me a Bordertarian, which is a libertarian who deviates from the rest of the libertarian pack by advocating for nothing other than borders. I believe that a country, like, alright, so I, I ask myself the most fundamental question when it comes to almost every issue that I deal with that is a political or even a social issue in many ways. And it, it, it is this question, is the government necessary? So when I ask myself that and I come across an issue like gay marriage, I'm thinking to myself, alright, is it necessary that the government has to be involved in marriage and deciding who or who can't get married and this is why I come at it from this perspective because whether or not I personally agree with the prospect of gay people getting married whether or not I think it's the most beneficial thing I understand that it's not my right to use the force of government to then say hey if I don't agree with gay marriage then you cannot be gay married, otherwise you will be fined. If you don't pay the fine, you will go to jail. And it won't be me who, you know, takes you to jail. It's going to be men with guns. And then I go on and uh, we get to roads. Is the government necessary for roads? And locally, I would say, no, not at all. You don't need the government to create local roads. Naturally, through voluntary transaction, you will create a road because you're not going to have a house and then you're not going to have a business that's three miles away. You're not going to stand around, scratch your head and go, oh, well, how do I get to that business? No, you're going to build a road. Neighborhood communities will worry about the roads in their neighborhood. Businesses will worry about the road that helps lead to their business, so on and so forth. Now, if you talk about stuff like interstate highways and freeways, then maybe you need the government, but that's a huge maybe. You know, uh, uh, interstate highway stretching from one end of the United States to another. So, for example, Highway 101, which is here in Oregon, but it, it's, it, it starts... I, I know it starts in uh, California. I don't know if it goes anywhere else besides California. But it, California from one end, and it goes all the way through Oregon, up through Washington State even, and then even through the west coast of Canada. And I think it even 
passes through or passes by Vancouver, Canada, not Washington. <clears throat> so that's a huge maybe. So let's talk about something like the military. Is the government necessary for military? I would say yeah. So I'm teetering on this question. This question allows me to teeter on any specific issue. And I exhort you to take that basic fundamental question and say, do we need a government for this? And if we do need a government for this, how much do we need? So... If I accept the basic premise that, yeah, we might need a government to do certain things, then I also accept the premise that we, the best form of government isn't a government where a single person has power. Therefore, it's a more representative-based government. So, a Republican form of government where the people elect representatives. And you kind of need a form of democracy in a way, not pure democracy. I cannot stand democracy, and let me explain that. You need some form of democracy to help peacefully change from one administration to another. And in a way that the United States Republic is set up, is through the Democratic vote. You have a vote, you have an election every two years, and a certain amount of people are up for re-election. When it comes to our House of Representatives, every single one of them is up for re-election every single year. When it comes to the Senate, uh, they serve six-year terms. So every two years, a certain amount of them, I don't remember uh, how many, a certain amount of them, are up for re-election every two years. And then with the president, it's every four years. And governor, uh, I think in my state, it's every four years. I'm not sure. And so on and so forth. You know, with the mayor, blah, 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 term limits. Or you, you have a specific amount of years before your term is up. And you have to go for re-election. So if we agree with that basic premise, then we have to agree with what geographical location is to be governed by a certain administration. So this gets into the idea which somewhat relates into my previous video about nationalism and globalism. Do you think we are better off if we have a one world district government where we have our representatives that go into this single federalized or centralized government of the entire globe? Certainly some people believe that would be a good thing. I strongly disagree. I think the smaller the geographical area, the better. So here's the thing. If you have a government and you decide on what geographical location this specific administration will be governing. So in the United States, we have our cities, municipalities, then we have county, and then we go state, and then we go the federal government, the country. <clears throat> and there's many ways you can divide these each ca uh, geographical locations in order to figure out what type of system of government you're going to have, how many representatives you're going to have. How many government officials you are going to have, which one supersedes the other when it comes to legislation, um, and what, how, how the power dynamic, how the balanced power dynamic is going to function. So then it, it comes down to this basic question. All right, you accept that a government is necessary for X, Y, and Z, but what is the role of government? And we're going to say, all right, it's to protect the rights, the liberty of the citizens that it oversees. This is just if you assume that a night watchman state is the form of government that we need. Okay, so what is one way that you can protect your citizens? Borders. And this isn't like, we're talking like we have to frisk you every time you want to leave the country, but this is, okay, listen, if you're not from here, if you're not a citizen born in this country underneath the jurisdiction of this night watchman state, then you need a background check, a disease check, all right? Now, there's people who are like, oh, that's pretty xenophobic. What, you get special privileges because you're within these, the, this arbitrary, arbitrarily uh, uh, drawn borderline? Because you're born in this country, so you think your soil is somehow better? No, I don't think my soil is somehow better just because I was born in this country. But I believe in the system of government in a way in this country that I'm born in. And this government has the role to help somewhat protect my rights, then I want them to help protect my rights from somebody who might infringe upon that. I have a right to avoid sickness or to avoid murder. So if you're not a citizen of this country who was born in this country, you're born outside the jurisdiction of this country, then the government has no obligation to protect your rights if you're not in this country. 
Therefore, for you to enter this country and then to be under the jurisdiction of the security of this sort of government, and when I say security, I'm not talking about NSA type, uh, keep you safe by violating your rights. I'm talking about, all right, if you want to come in and join this country and be under the protection of this night watchman state and have your liberties protected, then you have to do X, Y, and Z to make sure you're not going to hurt other people. Background checks so we know that you didn't murder somebody in your home country. Uh, a disease check so we know you're not going to spread Ebola to other people within this country or some sort of uh, disease or virus that has been 100% eradicated within these borders. And we're also maybe going to see, it, it, we're going to make sure you're not a terrorist or anything like that. That is a fine and necessary function of a government that has to protect the rights of the people that are within its border. Therefore, I agree with borders in a sense. In my utopian vision of society, I would love there to be no central government, to have nothing but private property rights, and then we could settle things that way. That sounds amazing to me, and that is something I would love. That would be so great. But unfortunately, we don't live in this utopia, and this is the next best thing. Therefore, does a country have an obligation, or have a right, and I'm not arguing about the Constitution, because... Legally, according to the way our laws are set up, I'd like each state to determine their each individual immigration policy uh, because the Constitution, if it's not in the Constitution, the federal government has no authority to do it. And in this case, when it comes to immigration, the federal government has no constitutional authority to do anything with the borders. So technically, that's left up to the state. Anyway, sorry. Um, <clears throat> there's so much I could talk about. I really should have had a more focused... The plan outlined with this specific talk. Nonetheless, let me take a drink of water because my throat is bothering me. Okay. So let me concentrate. Let me let me focus. Let me put my laser vision on the topic I am trying to talk about. So I agree with the basic premise that a government is necessary. Borders are somewhat necessary. So... I sympathize with both sides with the position that I have. Um, I don't agree with the economic arguments that people throw. I think we should end a welfare state. But I don't think everybody should just be allowed in for whatever reason because they're seeking asylum. So this brings us into the conversation about tear gas. Are, should, is it reasonable for the United States government to use tear gas on a crowd that is trying to enter the country illegally? I don't know, but let's talk about it, because it's a pretty huge, sorry about that vibration, I'm getting a phone call from a number I don't recognize, uh, let me just say it is 100% insane, let me talk about what I wanted to talk about, it is 100% insane to assume that using tear gas on a crowd is the same thing as Nazi Germany gassing the Jews, or Syri the Syrian government, Assad, using chemical weapons on the rebels of his country or even vice versa the rebels in Syria using chemical weapons as other on, on other people on their enemies because they've used chemical weapons too this is without a doubt or the chemical weapons that Saddam Hussein possibly used on his own citizens which are weapons that we gave him possibly I say possibly because you know there were no weapons whatever that's I'm sorry I keep going off topic there is just so much to talk about. I just want to break down that narrative with this single sentence. Do you really think that using tear gas to prevent somebody from walking straight through your border trying to break in is the same thing as trapping a big religious and ethnic group inside of a chamber to kill them? Do you think that's the same thing? I could understand if you said, oh, the FBI threw tear gas, the police, the law enforcement threw tear gas into this this closed off, concealed building where they're going to be trapped in with the gas. I could understand the argument then. And this isn't me being an anti-illegal immigrant or anti-immigrant. I'm pretty empathetic. I understand. And you know what? I could even sympathize. 
Because if I was starving or whatever, I would I would jump any wall. But to pretend like throwing tear gas into a crowd to disperse them away from your border is remotely the same as using chemicals as a lethal weapon to kill people or exterminate a religious and ethnic group like they are vermin. This is something that really irritates me because this is... It's such a false equivalency. The only equivalent is we're using a chemical. When we all use chemicals every day. So using the word chemical is a fear tactic. It's a way of scaring you saying we're using chemicals on civilians. Like, oh, well, you drink chemicals all day. You eat chemicals all day. You clean with chemicals all day. It is what is the function of this chemical how is it being used? Who is using it? What is it being used for? Why is it being used? What are the effects of this chemical? If I wash my hands with soap, you're not going to be all like, oh my god, this person is using a chemical. Well, there's some people that are like that, but most people aren't going to freak out that I'm putting a chemical on my hand to clean my hand and kill these germs. If I if I use a chemical to keep out mosquitoes from my house, is, is that a bad thing? Uh, th somebody might come into my house, but this chemical that keeps out mosquitoes is there. Even though this chemical that keeps out mosquitoes in the quantity that it's in probably won't kill anybody. <clears throat> so this is just such a, a false equivalency. It is 100% dishonest and it is illogical to try to even compare these different facets. That would be like comparing if I take you home, I kidnap you, take you home, chop you up into tiny pieces. Is that the same thing as if somebody's trying to kill me and I pull out a knife saying, hey, don't mess with me. And then the person runs away. Are those the same thing? Chopping somebody up in your basement or using a knife to disperse an attack? No, they're not the same thing. They are different. Plus, uh, I can't remember I was reading this. I really did. I really wish I did some more research, but this is my podcast. This is a little more off the cuff. Soldiers, certain soldiers, part of their training is they have to withstand tear gas. I don't remember which branch of the military, if it's all of them, uh, if it's a special group within a special with within a certain branch of the military. But this is a type of training that special operations has to go through, special forces. This is something that they have to go through. They have to withstand tear gas. Do you think they're going to make them withstand tear gas if it's going to kill them? Let's just put our soldiers through this tear gas so they all die so we no longer have our most elite of the elite. Sometimes people just lack any nuance. And unfortunately, this whole thing, I've only the only thing I could talk about was what I believe when it comes to the border, what I believe a necessary amount of government force is, whether or not I believe a border is necessary. But we don't even get to talk about the actual implications of immigration, of seeking asylum, of the cons and the pros and cons of this entire situation. Because this is such an important conversation. But it is controlled by the side who says, no, close all the borders, nobody's allowed in. And then the other side is, Oh my god, using tear gas to disperse a crowd is the same thing as trapping a bunch of Jews in a shower and killing them with gas. It's insane. I hope I made my point clear, even though this was an unbridled talk, rant, unconstrained, and without any focus whatsoever. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a good day. Peace out.